All right, well, when they told me that I was going to be speaking here, I asked the universe, please inspire me. Like, have a story come to me so that I can open it and really grab onto this audience. And it delivered, although it said, you're not going to come out looking so great at the end of this story, but it will serve the lesson either way. So here we go. So about five days ago, I was at Barry's boot camp. Anybody here go to Barry's? If you don't, good for you. You are not a masochist. So <laughs> I am at Barry's boot camp, which is a fitness class, and you're basically switching from strength training to treadmill, and you're jumping back and forth. Uh, like I said, you got to be a masochist to be in there. And it's a really dark room with loud music playing, so everybody's like in their own zone, right? And so I am switching from the weights to the treadmill, and I suddenly realize I'm wearing the wrong shoes for this treadmill, right? And if you haven't been there, the, th the tread for the, treadmill, for the treadmill is very, very thick, right? So that it can really grip you. But I'm wearing the wrong shoe, the kind of shoe that's gonna make you fall. So I'm running and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna fall. Like I can feel myself tripping. But then I immediately change my mind. I'm like, nope, not gonna fall, not gonna fall. Everything's gonna be fine. And we all know that the more you say something's not gonna happen, it's gonna happen. So unfortunately, I catch myself, I trip, and I go and I grab the handrails of the treadmill, and I cannot get myself to let go. I cannot overcome the fear that I've created in my mind of what would happen if I were to let go of this treadmill right now. So it is literally scraping the hell out of my knees, it is beating me up, but I cannot, because in my mind, if I let go, I am going to be catapulted across the room to the back where there's a giant mirror. I'm going to crash into it. It's going to break into a million pieces. Everybody's going to be covered in glass shrapnel, and I'm never going to be invited to Barry's ever again. So that is the story I had created in my mind, which, of course, was never going to happen. But anyway, finally, the woman who's standing next to me snaps out of her own like zone sees what's happening and pulls the emergency cord and the treadmill comes to a stop. And I'm finally able to crawl away and sheepishly leave the class. And I am, you know, brandishing like two nice um, scabs on my knees right now, just so you know I'm not making it up. But why do I tell this story? Because we're here to talk about overcoming objections, right? To help our uh, customers, our community, our audience to overcome objections. And that is stemmed from fear. And if you can't help them overcome their fear, they're going to keep holding on to those rails. They're going to hold on to the treadmill, even though the pain is actually worse than their worst fears, right? So it is your job to help them overcome that fear. How do you do that? You do that through your content, through your language, through your storytelling, by inspiring them to let go and take the leap, right? So I am going to demonstrate how we do that by using a very common household item because we're all personal finance gurus here, so I'm not going to use a personal finance example. Um, instead, I'm going to use a very humble uh, nor, what is it, household item, which is the dishwasher, right? And everybody's like, what? <laughs> I just lost half of you. But the dishwasher, why? Because I just recently discovered that people don't use their dishwashers. And that shocked me. I was like, wait, what? I thought this was like common knowledge that everybody used their dishwashers just like we use our washers and, and dryers. And if you don't use your washer and dryer, I, I can't even talk to you. I'm sorry. But the dishwasher, I found out, was a controversial household item, right? So how many people here have a dishwasher at home? Raise your hand. You have one. Okay. Now, out of you who say, yes, I have one, how many of you don't use it to wash your dishes? Okay. Here we go. We're, everybody shame these people. No, I'm kidding. So, <laughs> I did not know you guys existed until recently, okay? Didn't know you were a thing. Um, and I was like, wow, that blew my mind, right? And it just goes to show, like, if you stay in your little circle, you don't realize all the different groups of people with all the different beliefs out there. So I did what I do best. I started gathering knowledge because that is the first thing you need to do. When you discover there's a, a problem, you, or I shouldn't say a problem, but, you know, a situation that you're like, I want to help this person change that situation, 
you need to ask why they're in it in the first place. We tend to run to the solution stage, right? Oh, I'm going to tell them why I can solve it. I'm going to tell them why it's a problem in the first place. I'm not going to ask why. We need to stop and ask why. When you think about Google, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, these companies, they're in the business of gathering data. They pay millions and billions of dollars to gather our information. There's even laws that regulate this data, right? We have access to that data too at our fingertips through social media, and not enough of us are taking advantage of it. So you want to gather information. You want to ask your audience why. So I put out a poll on Instagram, as one does, and asked, why? Why don't you guys use the dishwasher? I am I'm blown away. And you might think, well, ask me. A lot of people hesitate to ask the why because like, oh, I'm not going to look like the expert. I should be the expert. I, why am I asking people the why, right? And it's, so you really have to put your ego aside, humble yourself for a minute, and ask that question, right? So you're going to put out your feelers. You're going to ask why. And people will respond, trust me. People love to give their opinion on social media. I don't know if you knew that. Um, they will volunteer it even when you don't ask them. So <laughs> when you ask, trust me, they will respond. So I got flooded with messages. And everybody's like, oh, here are all my reasons. And I learned a lot. <laughs> and I gathered the most popular of the reasons. And I'm, I categorized them. And we're going to go through that so you can see the different categories of objections. There's, there's going to be more, but these are like the top four that came up in this experiment. So the first one that I was told was, oh, I don't use it because my parents said, um, you're a lazy person if you use a dishwasher, right? You're a lazy, lazy person. So that was so ingrained in them that they now grew up, became an adult, had a dishwasher at home, and said, will not use it because... That will make me a lazy person, right? Did not challenge that way of thinking. What is that? That's cultural, cultural beliefs, right? Cultural beliefs, and I found that that was prevalent in minority groups and like lower socioeconomic status groups, but it like ranged, right? It ranged, but it was cultural. And this is something that I did not identify with because I'm Latina, I'm Brazilian, and my parents are immigrants. We grew up in households where sometimes there were dishwashers and we used it. We used it no problem. My mom loved the dishwasher. My mom was a housekeeper. She didn't want to come home and wash more dishes. She's been cleaning people's houses all day. So I did not grow up with this, with, uh, this idea that it was laziness, right? Um, so had I not polled my audience and asked, I wouldn't have learned that this was a belief that they had, right? I would have just superimposed my own experience onto them, which is what a lot of us do. So cultural is one of them. The other one, oh, it's only going to take me a few minutes. Ah, by the time you rinse the dish, you put it in the dishwasher, it's practically done. It's only going to take me a few minutes. I'll do it myself. What they don't realize, that's perspective, right? They don't realize that those minutes add up. They add up. They're eating away at their time, at their energy, things that they could be using to do something else. How often have you heard from your audience um, the response, oh, I don't do X, Y, and Z because I don't have the time. I don't have the energy. Well, why are you using your precious time and your energy on this task that you could be outsourcing to a machine, right? So now you're going to be um, addressing that issue from that perspective, right, to try to shift their mindset. The other one is misinformation. Oh, I don't use the dishwasher because it wastes electricity and it wastes water. Well, turns out... That's not accurate, right? The dishwasher actually doesn't use that much electricity. My bill will not really change whether or not I run my dishwasher or not. My air conditioner, on the other hand, different story. But, and then the water aspect, you actually spend more water hand washing than you would on the dishwasher. So now you're trying to educate them about this misinformation, right? Wherever they heard this story, could it be from friends, family, media, wherever, now you're helping them overcome this misinformation. And last but not least, and this is the one we tend to go to first, is, oh, I don't know how to use a dishwasher, and I haven't bothered to look it up and figure out how to use it. Or maybe I used it one time, didn't really work out for me, haven't tried it again. That's the know-how, right? And that's where we usually go first. We're like, ooh, I'm, I want to teach people about this new thing. I'm going to go teach my know-how. That's the value that I'm going to deliver. And that's the low-hanging fruit. And you, you can 
create a transformation and a change by doing that, but look at all of the other people that you're ignoring. Because you can teach somebody how to use a dishwasher all day long, but if they believe that they're lazy if they use it, then you're, you're talking to a wall, right? You're not going to change their mind. You're not going to get them to use the dishwasher. So I hope it's clear that all of these principles can uh, apply to anything, right? Personal finance related. If you're teaching somebody how to invest, if you're teaching somebody how to buy real estate, flip homes, whatever it is, this will apply. They will have so many objections and beliefs that you need to be addressing before you can really dive into the bread and butter of the nitty gritty of the know-how, right? And the most important thing I wanna highlight, and I think it's in theme with like what the other speakers have touched on, is obviously you wanna do this with integrity, but you also wanna do this with empathy, right? It's so important to bring empathy to everything that you do. And I've often said this, um, and I practice it on my platform, and I've said, if you're not coming from a place of empathy, then you don't deserve a platform, right? You have to be able to tap into that, into yourself. Because just addressing things from your perspective is very limiting. It's going to limit you as a teacher. It's going to limit you as a business person. And you're not going to reach the people that you are wanting to, to reach. And if you really believe in what you're selling... If you really believe, you're like, I'm making a change, I am helping people, then it is your job to grow as a person, to become more empathetic, to listen to your audience. And the only way you're going to listen is by humbling yourself and asking why. Like, why are you doing what you're doing? You know, so that you can learn from them. It's social media. It's supposed to be a two-way street, right? So I hope that all of you will take this now home as homework. My advice to you is to go home, ask your audiences why, whatever the question is, why, and, the, and take the top three objections that they have, create a little Trello board, and then start creating content that is going to address each of those objections. And you're gonna do it from a place of integrity and a place of empathy and care. And I bet anything, you are going to see higher engagement, you're going to see more conversions, you're gonna see more changes, you're going to be getting more messages from your entire audience. You will be connecting with them on a much, much deeper level, and that will result in more changes and more growth for the both of you. All right, thank you everyone for this, and enjoy the rest of FinCon. Excellent, everybody, awesome. let's, uh, let's thank Delianne here. Delianne, we're gonna hold you for a couple questions if that's okay. Awesome, well, you know, you talked about misinformation that kind of came to my mind there's a there's a platform out there called TikTok I don't know if you've <laughs> heard about it. heard of it <laughs> right so as content creators we're talking about integrity today we're talking about leading with empathy and seek, seeking to understand what's important for our audience do you think it's incumbent on us to fight some of the misinformation that we find out there or where, where does our integrity line drop do we just stick with our own content do we have to battle the misinformation how do you feel as a content creator out there yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you know me, if you follow me, you know that I take a little more of a aggressive stance on this one um, with certain products and certain things that are are portrayed in, in in social media. I think that it's my personal responsibility to correct some of the misinformation that's out there. It's not all of it, and I'm not the social media police, right? At some point, you do have to say, enough is enough. I want to focus on my message. I want to bring my audience um, you know, along in a positive way. You don't want to be constantly be battling everybody on the internet. But every once in a while, there's something that catches my attention. I'm like, I'm going to address this. And I do it in a very factual you know, way, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't, ha it doesn't have to be, you know, down and dirty and you don't have to name call or anything like that. I mean, I'm an attorney, so for me, confrontation is not a problem, <laughs> but you want to do it in a way where you're still teaching, right? So whenever I do in um, encounter something like that, I'm like, how can I make this a lesson? And that's always how I'm approaching something. It's not just for the drama, it's where is the lesson here and how can I bring that back to my, to my audience? I love that. Thank I you. I love that. That's so good that you're using your previous career as well to like bring that into who you are right now. That's, that's super helpful. So how do you balance like empathy in this world of social media online? How do you really like connect 
because I know that that can be challenging, especially when you know you're really trying to give good content, but that needs to be balanced with you know understanding who they are. Yeah, I think that's that's a great question because it's really hard to lose sight of the people behind the screens, um, especially if you're only interacting like through comments or through DMs. That being said, I have people pour their stories into my DMs, like really personal stories. And so taking the time to read those, taking the time to engage with them, maybe on an IG Live. Um, but also this is the work that I did when I was doing one-on-one -on -one coaching, like really having that one-on-one -on -one touch point with somebody, seeing the humans behind the problems. Um, really helps you shape your message. It helps you shape who you are and gives you like that extra layer of empathy so that when you hear that story again, because you will, um, you now are like making that connection between human and, you know, situation that you're trying to solve. It doesn't feel so, so disconnected. So I think we all have to get out there and just have more one-on-one -on -one conversations with people. Awesome. Love awesome. It. Thank you, Delian. Everybody, let's, let's give, give Delian a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs>